In previous videos we have used furniture production planning as an example where small wooden parts were used to build furniture. In the spirit of this application let's now have a closer look at the supply chain for the wood that is used. In different regions wood is harvested. Let's say that trees are cut in Sweden, in Poland, in France and in Germany. These trees are brought to lumber yards where the logs are sawn and sold. Let's assume that our company runs two lumber yards, one in the UK and one in Denmark. Logs must now be transported from the harvesting areas to the lumber yards. Transportation is not for free and a given cost is charged per unit of wood that is brought from a supplier to a lumber yard. The cost may vary depending on the distance. The amount of wood that can be supplied from a particular region is limited and specific to the region. On the other hand, each of the lumber yards has a specific demand that should be met if possible. Given this data, we could check in advance if the supply perfectly matches the demand. If this is not the case, it will turn out to be convenient to introduce a dummy. If total demand exceeds total supply, the dummy is meant to be an additional supplier, a supplier that doesn't exist in reality, of course. If, on the other hand, total supply exceeds total demand, the dummy represents an additional customer that lives only on paper. The so-called transportation problem is the problem of finding transportation quantities such that the total cost for transportation is minimized. Before we proceed, you should try to model this problem by yourself. Try to find a general model for this problem. Pause the video now. Let's do it together now. For a beginner, it's often easier to formulate a model for an example with given numbers instead of providing a general model right away. Since the story told had no numbers, let's make up an instance. Let's focus on the parameters first. What data can be assumed to be known? We have suppliers. Let's use the ones from our story. So we have one in Sweden, one in Poland, one in France, and one in Germany. Let's assume that the suppliers can provide the following amounts of wood. Let's say the amounts are given in cubic meters. From Sweden we can get 5 units, 5 cubic meters. From Poland 3, from France 2, and from Germany 4. Second, we have customers with demand. Again, let's use the ones from our story. We have the UK and we have Denmark. Now let's check if total supply perfectly matches total demand. The so total supply is 14 and total demand, let's assume demand is 6 in the UK and demand is 3 in Denmark, so total demand is 9. Hence we need a dummy customer.
This is the yellow guy that you have seen on the map before. With this guy total supply equals total demand. Let's choose some arbitrary numbers for the transportation cost per cubic meter. So we have cost per cubic meter. And let's assume the following. Four, two, three, eight, one, six, two, and two. Note, the dummy does not exist in reality. Hence, it's fair to declare zero transportation costs because no wood will ever be transported to the dummy. The most interesting part is the choice of decision variables. What do we want to know? We'd like to know the transportation quantities from the harvesting areas to the lumber yards. We can draw a table to illustrate this. So we are looking for quantities that are to be transported from the suppliers to the customers. supply limits here and demands there. The entries of this table are unknown. They all have the same function. They specify quantities to be transported. Given what we have discussed in previous videos so far, we could think we should name the decision variables something like x1, x2, x3, x4 and so on. But that's not clever. It will turn out to be much more convenient to name the variables x11, x12, x13, x21, x22, x23, x31, x32, x33. Three, x four one, x four two, x four three. From the indices, it is then immediately clear which pair of supplier and customer we are talking about when stating x four two, for example. That's much easier than calling a variable x eleven in this con in this context. By this example you see that it is sometimes convenient to introduce multidimensional variables, that is variables with multiple indices. Can you formulate a model for this instance now? Give it a try and pause the video now. Let's do it together. The objective is to minimize the total transportation cost. Therefore, we minimize, let's see, 4 times x11. Plus 2 times x12.
plus 0 times x13. plus 3 times x21 plus 8 times x22 and so on up to 0 times x43 Supplier 1 must deliver 5 units. So we have x11 plus x12 plus x13 equals 5. The same for the other suppliers. Customer 1 must get 6 units. So we have x11 plus x21 plus x31 plus x41 equals 6. Likewise, the other customers. Don't forget the domains. Now we are ready to formulate a general model for the transportation problem. For the parameters, let m be the number of suppliers and let n be the number of customers. Let Cij be the cost for transporting one unit of wood from supplier I to customer J.
Let SI be the amount of supply of supplier I. And let DJ be the demand of lumber yard J. Please feel free to pause the video once more and try to formulate a general model by yourself now. Do it now. Here is the solution. We minimize total transportation cost and consider all combinations of suppliers and customers. Each supplier must deliver its total supply. The demand of each customer is met. Recall that one of the suppliers of the customers might be a dummy if necessary. And finally, the domains. <laughs>